when we went into this, admittedly, our reproductive endocrinologist told us that there was a good chance that he was going to run all these tests and get the genetic counseling back and it was going to lead them absolutely nowhere. <laughs> Hey guys and welcome back to our channel thanks for joining us again if you are new here then my name is mariah and i'm jeremy and we are on a journey to conceive so let's hop into this video so as you guys know we have been waiting for a while to get all of our testing results back so that's what we're going to talk about in today's video so we're just going to take you through all of the test results we finally got them all compiled so yeah so the first thing that we got done was genetic counseling uh we got both karyotyping for the two of us. Jeremy's karyotype came back normal and so did mine. And then I got some additional counseling done. I got tested for factor five and factor two and they both came back normal. My protein C came back normal. My protein S came back normal. My lupus screening, I don't have lupus. My homocysteine, which is basically part of the MTHFR mutation it tests for elevated levels. So if you have elevated levels of homocysteine, it usually means that that mutation is actually impacting you. But I don't have to worry about that because mine was normal. And then I also got testing from the reproductive endocrinologist. So I do not have any problems with my RH factor. I'm O positive, so there's no issues there. I got my cycle day three labs done. And for this follicular phase, I got my estradiol check, which was 19. The normal range is from 12.4 to 233. So mine's at 19, so it's within the normal. My FSH, normal range is 3.5 to 12.5 mine is at 6.6 .6, so once again i'm kind of in the middle of normal then we have my lh which was at 10.6 and the normal range is 2.4 to 12.6 then we also checked my thyroid so my tsh is 2.54 and the normal range for that is 0.27 to 4.2 and then my amh is 4.82 and the normal range is from 1.23 to 11.4 and then the median which is like a good range or a good median for that is 4.7 so i am slightly above that then he also tested my prolactin and that came back at 12 and the normal is anywhere from 4.79 to 23.3 you guys saw me get my hsg done that came back as normal when i went in and looked at it because i can see all of these results online so i have both a normal normal shape uterus as well as normal fallopian tubes no blockages or anything like that when they push the dye through it's built right back out into my abdominal cavity so there is no like scarring or blockages or I guess abnormalities there then on cycle day 22 I got my progesterone checked and that was at 15.7 so that was smack dab in the middle the one thing that I asked and requested specifically to get tested for none of my doctors were actually looking for it but I asked them to go ahead and check my vitamin D levels and uh, my gynecologist was like you live in New York everyone's pretty much vitamin D deficient but I will check it <laughs> for you anyway it's a good thing that I asked them to go ahead and check it because I am deficient in vitamin D your vitamin D should range normally anywhere from 30 to 100 with the optimal being above 50 mine is currently at 23 so, or when I got it tested, it was at 23. So I've already started supplementing for that. So as far as the microscopic eye can see, I am completely normal and they have not found anything yet, which while that's like very good on the one hand, it's also leaves me a little bit unsure about where this all is gonna wind up taking us because there's nothing in this very moment that foreseeably can be like fixed or or done so to speak 
Oh, side disclaimer, I can see all of my results online and I also got my genetic results mailed to me. So I haven't actually talked to my doctor yet. I haven't gone back to him yet. I do have an appointment with him next week. So I'll be taking you guys with me to that follow up appointment. So hopefully that goes well, but I haven't talked to him yet. So I don't know what his take on things is going to be, but that's where we're at. Also, if you're new here, because a lot of people ask me this question, they either think that I'm just jumping the gun and being like, oh, why do you think it's you or something's wrong with you? We have already gotten his sperm check. Jeremy got a vasectomy reversal, so we have already gotten that check and I will link that video right up there. We got his sperm analysis done in December and we are gonna be getting another one done next week because it'll be about almost a year since he got the procedure done. So just to kind of see where things are. I mean, the last time we got one done was six months ago at this point. So we were just kind of double checking everything. So how do you feel about those results? It's a little frustrating, admittedly, just to, to know I was, uh, hoping that something along the line was going to come up that was going to be the the smoking gun something that was going to point to all of the reasons why this was happening consistently and admittedly it's, it's there's there's no clear evidence that says hey it's this or hey it's that we're, we're still kind of in limbo i'm not sure if something's going to come up hopefully they they uncover something but uh, i'm anxious to hear what the doctor says next week uh, and what advice they have for us going forward. Yeah, I'm kind of curious what happens next. You? Yeah, I think disappointed is like kind of a good word to use. I don't know, it's a weird feeling. It's a very like mixed emotions kind of feeling. On the one hand, you don't want them to find something that's so devastating or detrimental or something that you cannot do anything to change. You don't want them to find something that medical intervention cannot help. At the same time, you're like almost hoping that they pinpoint what exactly it is so that you can make a plan to combat the issue. And when we went into this, admittedly, our reproductive endocrinologist told us that there was a good chance that he was gonna run all these tests and get the genetic counseling back and it was going to lead them absolutely nowhere. There is a potential that I will never figure out the reason why. So I guess that just leaves me really anxious to go to this appointment next week because if you don't have like an answer as to why this keeps on happening, why I seem to struggle with carrying i guess i just feel like so what's the plan now what are you going to do now because we don't really have many more options when it comes to testing at this point so i think i'm just really anxious to see what he's going to say and to see what the game plan is going to be given that he doesn't have anything concrete that he can say oh this is what's going on so this is what we're going to do about it i'm pretty sure i'm going to walk into that appointment and I don't think he even knows that I can see my results online but I'm pretty sure he's gonna go through it with me and tell me that everything is normal and that unfortunately they don't really know why but I'm still hopeful that he will just have some type of solution or something kind of put in place in the event that that does happen. One thing that I have been thinking for quite some time now is that during pregnancy, I need uterine support. So even though I got my progesterone checked and it's normal now, what I think is happening is I get to a certain point in pregnancy and then my progesterone starts to drop or is not rising properly. So I'm going in with the mindset that I'm gonna go ahead and have a conversation with him about that. So I'm basically gonna see if he's gonna be willing to prescribe me progesterone just ahead of time. That way, in the event that I do get pregnant again, I can already have it in my possession and start taking it before having to worry about when I can get in for an appointment or anything like that. I think for one, it'll put my mind at a little bit of ease and I don't know, I got it checked throughout the last pregnancy, but there was a three week period where I didn't get any levels of anything checked. So anything could have happened in that time period. I'm just really hoping that he's kind of willing to work with me and not let me so much steer the ship because I don't want him allowing things that just like absolutely do not make sense. But I do think that along with me getting my vitamin D back together and also me having progesterone on hand in the event that I do get pregnant again is going to make a big difference along with the other changes that I have already made. 
so yeah that's where we're at it's just hard in general having this level of uncertainty <laughs> yeah on the one hand i'm really happy and i'm really grateful that there's nothing like genetically wrong with either one of us or anything like that on the other hand you always want to know why and have a solid answer as to why and right now we don't have those solid answers so it was a, i'm usually a big time optimist and i was just kind of hoping that throughout this process there was going to be something that would be explainable and it can be fixed and that hey everything's all good and we can move forward and yeah we don't have that so yeah, we're still yeah, no. trying to figure I mean, things out yeah i mean we we still can move forward i think we've been approaching it very yeah. cautiously and trying to work with the medical team and follow their advice and everything like that at the same time jeremy and i did have a conversation in which we talked about like kind of in this case they don't find anything are we just gonna go ahead and keep on trying then and we pretty much decided that we will give them this time period to figure it out but if they are pretty much leaving us with no other options as far as testing or going down different routes then we are just going to go ahead and keep on trying on our own and hope that you know the medical team gives us as much assistance as they possibly can at this point i'm tired of putting this process off it's been three three months now yeah, yeah it's been it's been three months now so i have had two cycles since i'm coming up on another cycle so i guess you know hopefully next week He'll have a plan and be able to say, okay, you guys have the green light to start trying again. If he doesn't really say we have the green light, I don't really know what that means. And I would have to really kind of question him as to why. Because it's just a matter at this point of how long do we have to wait, wait. to still not get an answer. Yep. So that's, that's kind of where we're at. We're hanging in there. We are staying as hopeful as possible, as always. <laughs> We definitely appreciate all of you guys for sticking it out with us. We appreciate all of your prayers and all of your continued support. It does truly help and it does mean a lot to us. So we appreciate you and thank you to all of my other TTC sisters out there. I am rooting for you. We're still praying for you guys. We hope that you receive your blessing soon, whether or not you're waiting on your pregnancy or you are waiting on your rainbow baby. We are really just as hopeful for you as we are for ourselves. And we know that it can be extremely difficult when you're in this limbo or waiting process, so. Yeah, hang in there. We're all going to get through it. So that's all we really have for you guys today. If you enjoyed this update, please go ahead and give us a huge thumbs up. And if you are not already subscribed, go ahead and do that to continue following our journey. Also, make sure you guys click the notification bell so that you get alerted when I have a new upload. We hope you all have an amazing and wonderful week and we'll catch you in the next video. Happy, Happy Father's, Father's Day! Day.